Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about sugar and discuss some of the nuances that are involved in understanding how sugar affects the body, the different kinds of sugar, and what to avoid and what to be careful of. So before we begin, it's important to understand the difference between kinds of sugar. For example, you have monosaccharides and disaccharides. What that means is the amount of molecules involved in the actual uh, product. So for example, you have three monosaccharides that are glucose, fructose, and galactose. Those can com combine and often then produce uh, disaccharides. So for example, maltose is two molecules of glucose. Or uh, galactose, for example, even though it is considered a monosaccharid, is basically gal, which is a type of molecule that is very sweet, uh, uh, coming from glucose, that is then connected to lactose to connect uh, to create galactose. So it gets really complicated in a way because the names are scientific, but the point here fundamentally is uh, you have these uh, com combinations that make a sugar more or less, um, let's say, sweet, but also how it affects the glycemic index. So the glycemic index is a scale of 1 to 100 that is basically a test to see what your own blood sugar levels do after two hours of consuming a product, a sugar product in this case. So for example, when you have glucose, the glucose glycemic index is 100 because it produces the biggest spike in blood sugar levels and thus it is considered the highest form of sugar. It's the most simplified and also the most um, high on the glycemic index. But oddly enough, maltose, which is two glucose molecules together, creates a, a number which is 105, so actually goes past the glycemic index. What that means to you is you want to be careful if you see maltose on a label, if you look behind and look at the label, you need to be careful because you're getting really high spikes of your own blood sugar and insulin production when you consume these products. So if you think about what is better or not as good for you, you have to be careful with the kinds of sugar and maltose, for example, is even more powerful than glucose. So if you see that on the back of a label, you probably want to be careful and maybe even avoid that food. So that's one of the things that I think is important to understand is the, the quantity of, uh, let's say, active ingredient in a molecule. But then at the same time, we have to understand how our body reacts to these active ingredients. So for example, fructose comes from fruit and most people think fruit is totally fine. And in some cases it can be. The thing that makes fruit okay, as far as the quality of it as a food, is that it's high in fiber. So because it's high in fiber, your body can slow that down that process of a big insulin spike, and thus you can get the benefits of the minerals and uh, vitamins that are in fruit without getting your body to produce too high levels of blood sugar. When people do things like um, a centrifuga, which is like a centrifuga, I don't know how to say it in English. It's basically when you um, take all the fiber out of fruit and you blend the fruit, kind of like a smoothie in a way. Um, you are taking the fiber content out and so you're only really getting the fructose of that fruit, thus creating a humongous spike with no slowing down element. And so really, if you have like a, a smoothie, it's not that different than having an artificially sweetened drink or you know a coke or something like that. That's why you have to be careful with these things because it's also how you consume them that makes a difference. So for example, pears, you know, they're very sweet, but they're high in fiber. So that fiber slows down the way that your blood spikes as far as the sugar levels. This is important though with fructose primarily because the way it's processed is it doesn't require insulin for metabolism. So if you imagine if you're pre-diabetic or if you're insulin resistant, which a lot of people are, and your body can't produce insulin to counteract the sugar and you have fructose, your body's gonna store that fructose as a, the sugar, as a triglyceride. And this is the point of why fructose is very, um, maybe non-beneficial for a lot of people because there's a thing called de novo lipogenesis, which is when your body produces new fat cells. And since your body is not producing insulin to counteract the fructose, you're often gonna store the sugar in the, from the fruit that you're eating 
in the form of fat. And so this is one of the reasons why, even though something has been typically considered a healthy food, and it is in many cases, it can also be contributing to why you're having a hard time losing weight, especially if you think that you can substitute a lot of healthy eating with simply eating a lot of fruit. Um, those are two things that I think are important to discuss. So the, the glycemic index of certain sugars being higher than others and being careful of that, and also the body's meta metabolism and how it processes the sugar and how that then creates new fat cells and then it's harder for you to lose weight. Because this whole thing that we're talking about, again, is correlated to well-being and health, but also if you're working on trying to um, get healthier and you're trying to lose weight or become less insulin resistant, you need to be careful of these things and oftentimes this is exactly where the mistake happens is that we think we're eating something healthy but actually it's uh, making our bodies work harder and it's not as healthy as we, we, we thought. With that in mind, we go to the third category which is the artificial sweeteners. So there's a lot of fake sugars out there but like I've discussed in another video, your pancreas doesn't know the difference. So if you're putting fake sugar in your body, your pancreas is still producing insulin to counteract that fake sugar. And if you keep asking your pancreas to produce sugar, uh, insulin over and over, that's when it becomes insulin resistant because it just can't handle the overload of work that you're asking on it. So that's part of the reason why artificial sweeteners are bad. But the other reason why is because they really destroy the microbiome. So you have a lot of bacteria in your intestines, in your gut, and a lot of them are good. And this is called microflora sometimes. You have these, um, basically bacteria and yeast tends to eat sugar to produce its own um, life. It, it's like the energy for uh, keeping that alive. But a lot of these sugars will actually kill the bacteria in your stomach and the good bacteria especially. So then your stomach is not digesting properly because the bacteria instead of helping your digestion have been basically wiped out by this chemical sweetener. That's also why artificial sweeteners, they're not as miracle of a, uh, of a food as you would think. They're chemical and so it might say zero calorie on the can of Diet Coke that you have, but that artificial sweetener is actually burning through a lot of the microflora and uh, ruining your gut biome. And this is part of the reason too why you might have a hard time with food. Maybe you're not digesting it properly because you simply don't have all the enzymes and bacteria and yeast working together to properly metabolize. So these are some of the things that are related to sugar that I think are important to know. Just to cover it again, be careful of the kind of molecule that you're having. Fructose is very strong because it doesn't need insulin to metabolize and artificial sweeteners are very chemical and so they can burn through your gut biome. These kind of things are the nuances that make us understand better health and fitness. So if you like this kind of stuff and you want to know more, please write to us in the comments. If you can hit subscribe, that helps us quite a lot. And we hope to help you with these kind of things more often. So thank you as always. Hope to see you soon and be well.